You are listening to 600 Second Saga. Today's feature is Daughter of the Sea by George Nicolopoulos. Magdalena could swim before she could walk. She could hum the songs of the sea before she could speak. When she cried, her tears were the salt of the ocean. She didn't remember her mother. Years ago, a storm had swept her father to the shores of Galaxidi, baby Magdalena in his arms. Father had sailed all over the seven seas, but he never set foot on a boat again after that. A carpenter now, he wouldn't stop talking about the sea. And yet, in all the stories he told Magdalena, he never once mentioned her mother or the shipwreck. Whenever she asked him, he just grew silent, until she finally learned not to ask. Magdalena's father raised her in the busy seaport of Galaxidi, with stories of the usuri, the haunted tree that lives at the bottom of the sea, feeding on the fools who dive and try and cut it off. Of Gorgana, the sister of Alexander the Great, who catches passing ships with her tail, to ask sailors if King Alexander still lives. Of Asaph, the giant who can drink up the ocean and clog the seas with his mighty black beard. She grew up to become a young woman. She was beautiful, but the boys shied away from her. Perhaps it was her big gray eyes that changed color according to her moods, just like the sea. Magdalena loved her father. Still, when she was sixteen, she ran away from home to become a sailor. Girls were not allowed to be sailors, and so she cut her long black hair and walked to the port of Itea, along the way stealing a boy's clothes while he was swimming. She found employment as a deckhand on the first ship she saw at the port. The ship's name was Panaia Spiliani. Her own name was Mahelios, she told the first mate. As Magdalena's ship sailed across the Aegean Sea during her first voyage, the sky turned black, and thunder started rolling. Soon the waves were like hills, and the small ship was thrown here and there like a nutshell tossed about in a winter storm. They reached the eye of the storm, and there they beheld Gorgana. Magdalena knew her as soon as she laid eyes on her. She was as tall as a mountain, her hair was black, her face was beautiful and proud. Below her bare breasts she had scales of a fish and the tail of a sea serpent, long and sinuous. Gorgona fixed her eyes on the seamen, scrutinizing them. She was terrible and magnificent, and her eyes were like the sea, wise and angry and beautiful beyond reason. The ship's captain, Capitan Janos Gavalos, was an old sea wolf who knew all there was to know about Gorgana. He'd never met her himself, but back when he had been the young deckhand, he had served under a captain who had faced Gorgana and lived to tell the tale. Capitan Janos waited for the inevitable question, but to his astonishment, it never came. In all the tales he'd ever heard, Gorgana had hastened to ask, Does King Alexander still live? But now, she just kept staring at them. Silent and terrible wrath blazing in the edges of her eyes. In the end, Capitan Janos decided there was no point in waiting any longer. He had to take the matter into his own hands. O oh, mighty Gorgana, he shouted above the howling wind. King Alexander lives, and he reigns, and he rules the world. Trembling, he confronted her with an expression as solemn as he could manage. She grew terrible to behold. Her eyes burned. Her voice was a thunderstorm. Liar, she shouted. I know that my brother is dead and has been so for two thousand years. All captains had lied, but my mortal lover told me of his death. For years I grieved, yet in the end I came to accept it. 
Then I realized that while I was lost in my grief, the wretch had left me, taking my daughter with him. I want my daughter back. Tell me where she is, or I will sink your ship and drown you all. Ashen-faced, the captain looked at her. I don't know where your daughter is, Gorgana. I didn't even know you have a daughter. Liar, she shouted. All men are liars. She coiled her tail around the ship and squeezed. Timbers started to creak, ready to break apart. A wild impulse seized Magdalena. While the ship rocked and swayed, she began to climb the main mast. Many times she almost fell, as the mast along with the ship was jerked around, but she held on, and inch by inch she managed to climb upward. Hey, Mahalios, shouted the seaman from below. Are you crazy? You're going to fall to your death. But she finally made it to the crow's nest on the top of the mast. Magdalena could look at Gorgana in the eye now. Spare the men, Gorgana, she shouted. Then, please, she whispered. Gorgana laughed. Why should I spare them, boy? All men are liars, like the one who said he loved me, then stole my daughter from me. She squeezed harder. The crow's nest swayed like a willow in the wind, but the girl held fast. She stared at Gorgana's angry eyes. They were gray like her own. Silently, Magdalena started to take off her clothes. She took them off one by one until she stood naked on the crow's nest. The seamen stared and shouted in amazement, but Magdalena had eyes only for Gorgana. Take me, mother, she shouted, and she jumped off the mast into the water. The men of the Paeania Spiliani swear that when the sea became calm again, there was no sign of Gorgana, or the strange girl who had been Mahalios. All around the Aegean Sea, sailors still tell tale of Gorgana's daughter, though no one knows her name. Only an old man in Galaxidi knows. He used to be a carpenter, but now you can always find him in the tavern, drowning himself in his drink. This was Daughter of the Sea by George Nicolopoulos. George is a speculative fiction writer and a poet from Athens, Greece, and a member of the Codex Writers Group. His short stories have been published in Galaxy's Edge, Best Vegan SFF's 2016, Grievous Angel, and many other magazines and anthologies in Europe, North America, Asia, and Australia. When not writing, he is, among other occupations, a father, a husband, a reader, an actor, and an engineer. Read more on his site, Summer Days, Winter Nights. Check our show notes for links. Music is provided by Mads. Learn more about 600 Second Saga, our authors, how to submit your flash fiction, and how to support the podcast in the show notes. This has been Mariah Avix and 600 Second Saga.